Hello automators! Today we're going over the features of the AOTech Tri-Sensor, setting it up, and looking at what installing a device handler in SmartThings allows the sensor to do for you. The AOTech Tri-Sensor is a 3-in-1 sensor compatible with Z-Wave hubs that can detect motion, lighting, and temperature. When set up without a device handler, the tri-sensor is limited in its options and stays with its default parameters. I'm going to show you how to set it up with a custom device handler using Samsung SmartThings. And there's nothing you can do to stop me! <laughs> Let's get started. The sensor is battery powered, so before we do anything else, let's rip Larry the plastic battery tag out of his home and toss him in the trash. To pair the device, put your SmartThings hub into pairing by selecting New Device. Next, put the Tri-Sensor into pairing mode by pressing the ACTION button. I don't know why it's called that, but AOTech has spoken. Your LED will blink white, then become solid yellow, then flash green twice once paired. If it doesn't flash green, you need to appease your Tri-Sensor by humming 90s pop hits and trying again. Alternatively, you can manually pair the sensor by selecting it from the list of devices, pressing the action button, and scanning the QR code or manually entering the code on the back of the sensor. Next, we'll need to grab the code for the custom device handler. I'll put the link in the description for you. Copy our code and head to account.smartthings.com. Hit My Device Handlers. Create New. From Code, paste in our code and hit OK. Hit Publish, then For Me. Your device handler is installed. Except we're not done, because SmartThings doesn't just name our device what it is. It may still be titled as a generic Z-Wave device. So, go into My Devices, find your Tri-Sensor, hit Edit, select Tri-Sensor from the drop-down menu, and hit Save. Once paired, we can go into our device settings for the tri-sensor. For the motion sensor, we can now change the motion re-trigger time. The clear time for each trigger. The sensitivity to motion. and what color we want the LED to be when the sensor detects motion. We can change what scale our temperature is displayed in, the change in temperature threshold at which the sensor will trigger, and how often it triggers. If you find the sensor is slightly off, you can modify an offset to make sure reporting is more accurate, and you can change the color of LED for a temperature sensor trigger. For the light sensor, we can modify the lux value at which the sensor will trigger, as well as how often it triggers. The option is also there to modify the offset if you find it to be inaccurate in its readings. And like every other sensor in this device, you can choose what color you want it to be when it triggers. You can also change the LED color for low battery notifications to give the sensor an ominous red light when it's on the verge of death. The sensor has an effective range of about 30 feet, so it should be able to handle most rooms in your home. 
We've done a few videos about sensors recently. If you're interested in seeing how Brian puts them to use in his morning routine, head to this video on the other channel. Thanks for watching.